This rig rundown is presented by the Yamaha DXR Series. Hi, this is Sydney Grigg with PremierGuitar.com. I'm here in Nashville, Tennessee at the Ryman Auditorium, sitting right next to Dave Bryson with Counting Crows, uh, just a few hours before showtime. And I see you've pulled some of your favorite guitars and we're dying to hear about them. I did, so. I did. Uh, well, I don't know what to tell you about them other than my, they are my favorite guitars. Yeah. Um, this one, is, uh, it's a 56 and it's a uh, beat to hell, but you know, it's just, it's amazing. It's just. Uh, this one you've had since forever, the beginning, right? Forever, since the second album. Okay. And, uh, and uh, I love it because it's so simple, but like, uh, it's amazing, just a, a couple, you know, going from 10 to 9, it's a totally different guitar. Right. Backing down the tone, a couple numbers, it's just all of a sudden it cleans up and it's just, you know, it's like you, I don't need all the switches to do so much with it. It's super, sure. super versatile. I, I always thought if I had to play one guitar through the whole show, which is sort of ridiculous because I change guitar every stupid song, but <laughs> but if, if I had to just pick one guitar... This would be it. Yeah, because I could almost make it sound like an acoustic if I want to, you know, wow. so... But anyway, uh, cool. So, uh, have you modified this one at all, or no? Is it... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, well, it, the original, it's original, the original version of this has a just a. I think it's just a round, straight thing. So there's no compensation for intonation in any way, okay. and uh, you know, which makes them really hard to play. And so, this thing, you know, I I believe in playing instruments. Of course, it's nice to keep the museum pieces too, but sure. you know, if it's out of tune always, which it is, right? You can't not be in tune, out of in tune. Anyway, um, this just makes it like super playable, and I, I believe the frets have been redone, um, and sadly the pickup had to be rewound. But um, uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's okay. It's, yeah. uh, the people who re rewound it knew what they were doing, and, and it's great. So. Cool. I don't think these are stock either, now that I have to say that, but who cares? They're knobs, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> they change the sound a little bit. Um, yeah. Uh, so that's that guitar. Okay. What do we have here? And, and this thing is a, a 62 Jazzmaster, Fender okay. Jazzmaster. And nice. um, it, 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 I actually played that on the first record. I bought that before Counting Crows even existed. Um, and... and it's on the song Sullivan Street, right. but since then I've really changed it a lot. Um, I had all the electronics taken out of it. This guitar is like the polar opposite of this guitar. It's got 58,000 switches. It's got all Whoa. these little thingy bobs that, you know, I don't know if anybody actually uses them. I'm sure someone does, but I had them all unwired. So it, it's wired just like a, um, well, not like a Les Paul because there'd be more, I guess more like a, a telly, I guess, you know, it's, it's got a volume and tone and then you can switch between the, the two pickups, you know, so it's either, you know, neck, both, or sorry, neck, both, or bridge. Um, and I don't know if that really improved the sound, but half the switches didn't work anyway. So it just, it just got rid of all the kind of BS in the signal path. And, um, but the, the real, I think the kind of weird, weirdo thing I did to it um, after playing it on the first record, I've stopped using it. I kind of replaced that song with another guitar, and I, it, it wasn't getting any airtime. And uh, we were working on on our third record, on This Desert Life, and uh, there was a song called uh, Wish I Was a Girl that needed a rhythm rhythm part, but we kind of have a lot of guitar players in our band, and it's really hard to find um, uh, sonic space sometimes. You know, you can't just play big, huge things all the time because everyone starts doing that and there's sure you know you have to find your little frequency so to speak or your or your note range or your tonal thing and your rhythm thing too but anyway making a short story long i whacked off two of the strings so it doesn't have the two high right. strings it's just the bottom four strings and we actually centered it in the guitar because it just makes it a little easier to play it then it feels like they're all falling off otherwise so it's sort of like um uh, a, a baritone guitar but okay. it's not a baritone guitar because it's the, it, it's tuned exactly the exactly the same as a guitar. But we put really fat strings on it. This is wound. That's the G, and uh, I don't know why. But that guitar and all the guys in the band agree with this. You pick it up and you don't play it like a guitar. It doesn't sound like a guitar. It sounds like 
something completely unusual. And, uh, and, uh, and I've played it on about four songs now, and it's just so great for my band because, again, we have so many guitar players. I mm-hmm. can find that kind of lower, mid spot, and they kind of tuck it back in the mix, and it just, it just ends up being this great glue thing. Sure. Where, you know, if, if, and if, you, if I try to play the songs I play that on on a guitar, you start getting these overtones ringing and, you know, it's really hard to really be aggressive because you're trying to not play these strings because they're not part of the part. And This thing, man, well, it's just lame to play it actually for the thing. But No, please but, do. Um, Here. But like it, well, the, the song that it was sort of uh, born on, I suppose, is called Wish I Was a Girl, but it goes... So you can see, like, it just, <laughs> like, if you do that on this guitar, I don't know, it just goes like, it's really hard to not hit those notes. Right. So, and it, so you have to be really careful and be a better guitar player, I suppose, to not do it. And plus, beside that, you get the really fat strings. I mean, they're crazy, you know. So it sounds like a baritone, but it's like an octave up from a baritone, I suppose. And baritones to me are really hard to play because they're so low. It's just like, well, now I'm a bass player, you know. So, um, yeah. So that's that, and I think it's on three and or four songs. You use this one in the studio too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's sort of, you know, almost each album since then. There's just been that song. It's just like, oh, shit, we need a, we need a part. It's not working. The sounds aren't working. It's like, let's grab the jazz master and see if it works. So, cool. Yeah. Um, so, so. I sort of took this idea on our most recent record, and uh, this isn't really particularly original, actually. It's it's a tenor guitar. Okay. And um, this isn't the one I played on the record. I, I'm, I'm borrowing this temporarily until I get mine. Uh, I'll put a pickup in it. But um, it's sort of the same idea in that it, it, tenor guitars have four strings, obviously. Um, and I don't know, it just sounds really different. Um, That's the part from this song called Possibility Days on the new record. And, and today at Soundcheck, um, this broke, <laughs> or the cables broke for it. And I had to play it on my acoustic. And everyone in the band turned and they're like, what? why are you playing that? What's up? It's like, I, it busted. Don't worry about it. But, you know, I play the exact same chords. It's the same thing. Right. It doesn't sound the same. I can't play it the same. There's too many notes. You know, there's more thirds. This thing's all tuned in fifths. There's only a couple thirds that end up getting played in the in the chords, and it just has this real dumb, simple, focused sound. All right, so what do you have this one tuned at? Well, I th- I think okay now I'm really stupid and I should know this, but I think a <laughs> typical tenor is tuned to it's either an, an A in fifths or a G in the fifths. I can't remember, but <clears throat> what I tend to do when trying to figure out a part for the song is just start tweaking the tuning until I can make the chords really simple to voice. Okay. So it, this is in fifths, and the song's in B-flat, so I just started on B-flat. But I, I couldn't get this the high string to make any sense. The high string should be a, a G, but it didn't really fit in with the key of the song, so it couldn't ring. So I, I tuned it to an F, right? Tuned, so it, it's it's fifth, 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 and then fourth, right? Um, and it just... I, you know, I just had to keep monkeying with it. So I, I don't know how to play a tenor. I don't really know much about playing in fifths. You know, I'm not that, I'm really dumb, right? So I just had to figure out Hardly. the chords <laughs> as, as I went along. But, but after a while, I realized this string just wasn't working. So I tuned it down yeah. a whole step. And, and then now I can just, now I can't make a mistake. <laughs> they just, they can all ring. And it's like, you know, it makes me sound like I know what I'm doing. But. You know, clearly I don't. So. <laughs> All right, so we're going to open it up to Facebook. We've got some pretty great questions here. So a lot of Facebook people are asking about amps. Um, how would you say your overall tone has changed? Um, well, let's see. On, on the first record, I got introduced to an AC30 um, by our producer, T-Bone Burnett. Um, I don't know how I had never played one before, but uh-huh. I hadn't. But I mean, I really didn't know what I was doing back then. I mean, I still don't, but I really didn't know back then. And, and uh, fell in love with an AC-30. I have an AC-30. It's been on most of our records. 
um, but it seemed a little finicky for live. So um, I got a matchless DC-30, which is you know probably about as close as you can get to it. That may or may not be true, but anyway, it, it feels like an AC-30 to me in a lot of ways. And you know, it's kind of a tank, like I've never rarely had them fail. Um, and let's see, my, my matchless got stolen. Uh, a bunch of our stuff got stolen early on, so um, I got a new matchless, so that was all good. But then I got uh, turned on to uh, Marshall, and I've got a great, uh, it's a 70s Marshall 50 watt head that was actually turned into a blues breaker. It's not really a blues breaker, I wish it was, but it, it's killer. This is an unbelievable amp, but it's so ridiculously loud that it doesn't work on stage because I can't control it. It's just like, it, it really is on 11 all the time, uh, but it's a wonderful sounding amp. In fact, Dave Immergluck played it all over the new record and now he won't give it back to me. Yeah. But, uh, but, okay, so I kind of morphed into this a little bit more Marshally sound, which is a lot on a lot of the records. And okay. that leads me to my new amp, which is a satellite amp. Um, I believe it has the same power section as a Marshall uh, EL84s. That's here. Here's where my intelligence really starts to show. Um, <laughs> But it, it is definitely more martially to me. It has a little bit more of a mid-range thing, and I am in love with this new amp. It is great. I'm sorry, I don't mean to be plugging an amp here, but this, but you're guy, plugging this, guy, <laughs> this guy makes killer stuff. And for me, I feel I can play with more dynamics and more clarity without being trebly. I was always fighting with our sound man on my tone. Like, I like things darker, and he's like, I can't hear it, I need more treble, but then it would get too bright, and he's like, now it's ripping my head off, and it's yeah. just like, I couldn't win. It's all fairly subtle stuff, but it, I couldn't really find a place where I was super happy, and um, and I just tried this amp, and played it at a couple sound checks, and okay, this is working, I did it at a couple shows, like, okay, I'm done. This is killer, and I love it. How long so, have you been using that? Uh, first tour, so you know, four oh, really? shows, but wow. we, you know, we okay. probably maybe done a couple shows before then, but uh, super psyched. He's a nice guy, and, cool. and, uh, and yeah, it's just it's, it's been great. So, all right, cool. Well, I think we're going to talk to your guitar tech then, and um, right. thank you so much for having us out here today, and good luck with your show tonight. Thank you, thanks for coming. All right, Dave Bryson, everybody. All right. Hey guys, we're with Bill Thompson, uh, Counting Crows Guitar Tech, standing right next to Dave Bryson's uh, amp setup here. You want to tell us a little bit about that? Sure. This is a satellite amp. It's a Barracuda. It runs on KT66 tubes and it's 35 watts and very simple. It's got volume, it's got tone, and it's just, it's great. We use a, a lot of different guitars through it. We use a Gretsch uh, Tennessean. Nice a Rick 360 12 and a, a Les Paul, a 56 Les Paul Jr. And they, they just all work great with it, which is the trouble we've had going from such different guitars. And this, this is the first amp in 30 or 20 years that it's really, it's really handled all of them. It sure. gives equally well, you know. We used to use other, a bunch of other amps and they just didn't do it, so. You got yeah. a backup one right Yeah, I actually bought that myself because yeah. I like this. Adam from Satellite sent these when we were rent recording and uh, we just liked them so much it just it was amazing you know it was just different you know uh, working with something that just made life easier we went from uh, eight knobs down to two wow. so simplifies everything yeah. and that that's really about it's simple it's a 212 cabinet there is a, a Celestian uh, cream back it's a cream one not the green back and then it's got the the Alnico blue on the other side and a 16 ohm cab and uh, the combination of the two speakers really works great. And then Lunchy or, or Salome or Sean, uh, he, he's got two mic to each, each speaker and he combines the sound to get, get a really beautiful sound out front. So uh, why don't you walk us through this pedal board here? All right, so basically we start with, we have a, a a loop master pedal that has two loops in it and a tuner out and we have one amp send out and we start with the Keeley compressor we go to the MXR microamp plus and then we go uh, straight into the the first loop the second loop has the the equalizer pedal that Dave just uses for two guitars okay. so he didn't want to go through everything with the, through the equalizer the the first loop that has the rest of the pedals basically goes from distortion, which is analog uh, king of tone, 
down to baby pink, and then we go into the, the sort of the processing. Oh, we go um, then we go to the wah pedal, and from that we go into the the, the Brigadier uh, delay, and from the delay to the full tone super trim, and then back into the loop, and that's it. We kind of so Dave can. He uses the loop to set up a scene and then hits the loop, you know, so he's not always going through all the pedals. And then it's on out to the amp, you know, out to his satellite amp. And that's, uh, we're using the power supply as a four times four Voodoo Labs, and it just because it handles, it has higher output for, for some of the pedals, like the Strymon Brigadier uh, needs uh, 250 milliamps, and uh, it just, it, it's, it, it also does 10 pedals. As, so it kind of handles everything we need. Uh, so are you using a wireless for this system? Yes, we're using a, a Sure system. It's UHF cool. and basically just two belt packs. And I split, okay. I, they're all equal and we just change between guitars and then he equals his tone on his pedal board. So it's the same output um, from both packs. Do you use the same uh, pedal for your acoustic? No, or? no, we have a different rack. We have a rack of uh, a Universal 610 and some pendulum preamps, two pendulum preamps, and, and a couple, we have Evil Twin DI, so it's, it's a little bit different system. And it makes it a little more versatile, and a little, we have more EQ on the acoustics. Right. You know, no effects, no other than that. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Hope you thank guys you. have a great tour. We appreciate you having us out today. Appreciate it, thanks thank for asking. You. Don't forget to sign up for PG Perks, your all-access pass to exclusive gear giveaways and discounts on PremierGuitar.com.